Hello. Hey guys, it's Conan and today I am going to help you survive high school. I get a lot of questions about high school since we're all kind of like the same age and you guys thought that I was a good high schooler. I get a lot of questions about it. Everyone's kind of asking the same questions and I guess people aren't really answering them for them. So I thought I would try my best to answer them since I have officially survived high school myself. Now I'm going to college. What? How did that happen? And since I was such a good high schooler and I totally didn't skip my health class 27 times, I thought I would give you some tips on how to survive high school. Non-sarcastically, I actually had a really fantastic high school experience and since I'm an incoming freshman at UCLA and a lot of you guys really want to go to a school like UCLA, like a big state school or a private school or just a school that's hard to get into, I thought I would share my high school experience and hopefully answer some questions for you guys that are kind of nervous about the future of high school and kind of nervous about the future of getting into college. I thought I would just get the questions that I see most commonly and try to use my experience to hopefully make your experience better. Let's do this. One of the questions I get asked the most about is making friends and the process of making friends and what can hopefully help you make some friends. Making friends is totally not as hard as you think it is. For most of middle school and even some of high school, I was very, 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 very shy. But I still ended up making so many amazing, supportive, outgoing, beautiful friends. And don't think that just because you're shy, you won't be able to make any friends because I I still made friends. But if you are shy like me, it is a tiny bit harder to make friends because it's really hard for you to like go out of your way to talk to someone. When trying to make friends, I say don't really bother aiming for a certain friend group or a certain person because that's really hard to do and it's a bit unnatural. Like it's hard to know that you want to become friends with someone just because you see them walking around in the hallways or something like that. If you're thinking about becoming friends with someone just because of their social status or something like that. Totally not worth it. When I was in high school, the group of popular kids really wanted to bring me into their group right when they found out that I was famous. They were the most boring people I think I've ever met in my entire life. I'm so sorry to the popular kids who might be watching this, but y'all are super boring. All they ever wanted to do was party and drink, and it just wasn't my thing. It was super boring. Don't pay any mind to social status. I made all of my friends through the classes that I had with friends. And good news for shy kids, you really only need to make one friend in order to make a friend group. That is the beauty of friendship, is you really only need one friend. So you only need to be uncomfortable one time. <laughs> and then after that, you don't have to worry about it that much. You can trust me when I say that you only need one friend. I have moved 14 times in my life. I am always the new kid. I made a lot of friends and it was always just because all you ever have to do is make one friend. Because the thing is, you make one friend and then that friend brings you to all of their friends and then you have a friend group and it's so much fun and you have supportive people in your life. Now to make that one friend, I would suggest just making little interactions. It never happens like it does in the movies where the kid like sees someone and is like, I want to be their friend and then all of a sudden they walk over and they're like, can I be your friend? I think if someone did that to me, I'd feel very uncomfortable because I don't know them. It might work, but it's kind of weird. All of my friends, one of the main reasons why I started talking to them was just because I had class with them and I started asking them questions about the homework and started talking to them about the teacher, their friends and about their family and about what they like to do. And it just naturally flows like that. Like it's not this big, oh, I wanna be your friend. I'm gonna go up to you and attack you with my friendship. It just doesn't really happen like that. Also, you don't wanna be friends with someone who you don't know anything about. So even for you, you know, it's better to have this slow process of getting to know someone to know if you really even want to be their friend because if y'all have different interests and are completely different people then you probably don't want to be their friend. Say hi to that person every day, compliment them on whatever they're wearing, try to do all your group projects with them and then over time you just randomly realize oh this person is my friend and I really love them and they're super amazing and I'm gonna spend as much time with them as I possibly can. Wham bam! A friend. Now if you're a naturally outgoing person Please go out of your way to become friends with the shy kids. They will really appreciate it. I definitely appreciated it. Next is how to balance school and having fun. I feel like during high school, I had a very healthy amount of fun and school. And the only reason why I had such a healthy mix of that was because I did not 
procrastinate. I was not a procrastinator. The absolute hardest time of my high school experience was around my sophomore year of high school. I hadn't learned how to not procrastinate yet and I was getting swamped with so much homework that it just kind of made me feel so exhausted all the time. My mental health was at an all time low. I just couldn't do anything. It was a really hard time of my high school experience. And it was because I was making mistakes in my efficiency. I would do homework at night when I was already tired, when I already had a full day of things and I really just wanted to go to bed. I started homework then. Of course you're not gonna be able to be doing homework fast when your brain is like dying. Do your homework with a friend right after school. That was when high school was the easiest for me. When I, one, had a friend who was super, super supportive and helped me do my homework, and when I did it right after school, when it was still daytime, when I still had energy, and my brain was still alert and fresh with the new information that I'd learned during the day, then I'd knock out the homework with one of my friends, it'd be super fun because I was doing it with a friend, and then afterwards, I'd hang out with my friend, and we'd have lots of fun. And knowing that after you finish the homework with your friend, you're gonna be able to run around in a park and be stupid and be a teenager is so much nicer than having a bunch of fun but the whole time you're having fun there's this like giant cloud of stuff that you have to do just looming over your head I can't stand that and there is a lot of fun involved in doing homework with one of your friends me and my friend Ashley have literally a book a small book that we've written with all of our inside jokes in it because we have so many inside jokes. They're so stupid, they don't make any sense, but they were all created while I was doing homework with her. So try to find a friend who's gonna support you, who's gonna push you to work hard and really have what's best for you and that friend in mind while you guys are doing homework and knock it out. Don't procrastinate so that you can actually have fun while you're in high school. If you find that you're doing seven to eight hours of homework every single day, there's definitely something that you're doing wrong. You either have way too much of a workload and you definitely need to like not have as much or you're just being very inefficient, which leads into how to handle stress. Best tip I could ever give to any high school student or any college student or anyone who's busy ever is to get a planner. I know it's a cliche, but this thing really freaking saved my life. There were so many times when I had so much to do and I really just wanted to die in a hole, but I just wrote everything down, organized what I needed to stress about, and it just makes everything a lot easier to swallow. I used the heck out of this planner. There's something really cathartic about the process of writing everything you need to do down, so just get a planner. If you ever feel any stress about school ever, get a planner. Just do it. Stop being stupid. Just do it. The sad fact about school and being in high school is it's stressful. It just is. It's a stressful time of our lives. It's very confusing. You're trying to figure out what your identity is, what your future is. You're trying to figure out college and you're trying to figure out the people around you and you're falling in love and you're falling out of love. There's so many crazy things first things happening while you're in high school, it's bound to be stressful. In times when I was very, very stressed during high school, it was always amazing to just talk out my stress to a friend, to a parent, to a teacher, to anyone who will listen. I cried to my art teacher more times than I think I've ever cried to anyone else. I have cried with my best friend. I have an amazing support group who is there to listen to you and everyone should have that. Because when you're stressed out, it makes it so much harder when it's all on you. When there's someone out there who's listening and who has the same problems and who will be there to kind of go through what you're stressing about with you, it makes it so much easier. There is no shame in talking about being stressed out to someone that you're close with. Writing music and making art was also a really good way of me speaking out the things that were on my mind. So also consider having something that kind of helps you process your thoughts. It can be art, it can be music, it can be a sport, it can be really anything that you enjoy. Next is a big one, which is how to deal with bullying. Here is some fantastic news for kids who are in middle school but are going into high school. Bullying is not near as much of a problem as it is in middle school as it is in high school. Every single one of my friends agreed with me on this. It's not just a me thing. In high school, kids don't care about other kids. Kids are already swamped with enough things. They don't really bother making fun of other kids, especially as you get further and further into the year when you're having more classes and more things to worry about. The kids don't really care about each other. They're not trying to you know, despite other kids just to get off on it. It's like not a thing that happens in high school. I went to a public high school in the middle of conservative Texas and you'd think that the kids 
were really mean, but you'd be very surprised. Kids these days, thanks to the internet, are a million times more tolerant of other kids than they were, let's say, maybe 30, 40 years ago. With that being said, there are mean people. They just always exist no matter what. They exist in the workplace when you are an adult. There's always mean people that just like to be mean because they are insecure and they have to deal with their own problems. People who are mean to other people, they need to work that anger out within themselves. That's not something you have to fix. I promise you that. There's nothing that you are doing wrong. Don't make it your responsibility to fix these kids. Tell a teacher, tell an adult if someone's mean to you. You don't need to deal with bullying. Teachers need to deal with bullying. Administrators need to deal with the bullying. You don't. The few times that I was harassed or heckled in the school hallways or in classes, I told a teacher I got so many kids sent to detention so many times. In my school, I was a bit of a target because I dressed differently, I talked differently, did different things in them. You know, I, I was making videos and writing music while they were all in football. So anytime anything ever happened, I just told a teacher. There's no shame in telling a teacher that a kid is following you around or something. Also, if you have friends, they will always stick up for you. My friends were extremely protective of me. They knew that I was a bit of a target because I live in a small town and I was semi-famous. I hate using the word famous, but I had a bit of attention while I was in high school. They were very protective of me. They were always like, don't you dare say anything about Conan. So having a friend group is very, very good. Next up is college planning and what you should be doing when. Water break. <coughs> Freshman and sophomore year of high school, don't even bother about planning what college you're going to and what major you're going to go to because you don't really need to know at that time and most kids don't know. Just work really hard in school. Simple as that. Do not slack on your classes, especially freshman year. Underclassmen years are really important because although you think that they don't matter, they're going to really mess up your GPA if you don't work really hard. And freshman and sophomore year are the easiest years of high school, so why not? get a head start while it's still easy. Something that you should be focusing on in freshman and sophomore year of high school though is definitely discovering what you're passionate about. What parents these days don't really understand about college is college isn't what it used to be. Colleges don't want kids who have perfect grades, who have perfect SAT scores and perfect ACT scores and perfect scores on their AP test. Sure, they like that, but that's not what they really, really want, especially the big schools and the big colleges that, you know, have the names to them, that parents awe whenever you tell them that you're going to. What colleges want to see these days are kids who are extremely passionate about one thing and stuck to that the whole entire time. I did not get into UCLA because of my grades. I got in because of my passion. I had good grades. I had a very high GPA. I got decent SAT, ACT scores, but they weren't high. I got a 1290 on the SAT. That's not high. What UCLA liked so much about me was the fact that I had passion, was the fact that I've been making YouTube videos for nine years. <laughs> they want to see that kids have a certain thing that they really love and they're really working towards. You can write in your essay, oh, I really like engineering, but they don't care if you like engineering. They want proof that you like engineering and that you've been working towards engineering. They wanna see that you've been in engineering classes for four years. They wanna see that you're working on things outside of school that are engineering related. They don't want an essay that says, oh, I love art, it speaks to me. Art speaks to a lot of people. They wanna know that you were born with a paintbrush in your hand and that you have so much passion for this one thing that you wanna do it for the rest of your life. Obviously, a lot of kids don't have that one thing that's like, this is my thing. That's okay. <laughs> That's totally okay. For kids who don't have something that they really are super passionate about, work really hard because it is harder to get into a school seeming like someone who's a master of none, which sounds offensive, but it's not. It's super normal. It's not offensive at all. <laughs> work really hard in your classes to make sure that you get into a very big school that has a lot of opportunities and a lot of pathways that you can go down. Junior year is kind of when it actually starts to matter what classes you're taking. You don't have to know what you want to do with the rest of your life by junior year. You can absolutely change the route of your entire life while you're in college. But if you don't know what you want to do, that's perfectly okay. Just work really hard on all of your core classes. That way, you have more opportunities when you start applying to schools. Take the SAT, take the ACT, take AP classes. Colleges still like to see good scores on that. Having good grades is never gonna hurt your chances of getting into a school. And then when senior year comes around, 
you apply. Do not apply to 20 schools. So many of my friends were very smart, were like the top 10 people in their class, you know, grade-wise. But they applied to like 20 schools while they were in their senior year of high school, and every single one of them regretted it. Nobody was like, wow, I'm so glad I applied to 25 schools. Nobody said that. <laughs> Apply to a few that you actually think you're going to go to. If you don't want to go to a certain school, don't apply to it. Don't apply because a parent's like, oh, you should apply to 30 schools. That's stupid. Don't listen to that parent. I applied to four schools. One school was a fallback school. It was a school that I knew I was going to get into. That sounds really arrogant, but it just, according to my grades and according to my extracurriculars, I kind of was able to predict that I'd get in. I, I kind of knew that I'd get in. The second school that I applied to was a maybe. It was, I could get in, I could also not get in. It was kind of a little bit more iffy, but there still was a chance that I'd get in. And then the last two schools I applied to were far shots, crazy schools that I totally did not think I would get into. I ended up getting into three out of the four schools that I applied to, which means that one of the crazy shot, no idea that I'd get into, really thought I didn't get into schools, I got into, which is UCLA, which is a school that I actually am going to. <laughs> when choosing those four schools to apply to, you have to keep different factors in mind, like money and location. But truly, if you have this massive passion for one thing and there's a certain school that you really want to go to and you've wanted to go to your whole life, you can find a way to make it work. I truly believe that. The two far shot schools that I didn't think I would get into were UCLA and Berkeley. I got waitlisted by both UCLA and Berkeley, but the second that I found out that I actually got into UCLA, I rejected my Berkeley application because I always knew that I wanted to go to UCLA. That was my dream school, which is proof that there is no harm in applying to a school that you don't think you're gonna get into. I'm not being a humble when I say that I didn't think that I'd get into UCLA. I really didn't think I'd get in. My grades just weren't close to good enough and I felt stupid because I've been making YouTube videos for nine years, but that was one of the main reasons why I got in because I had this clear passion for one thing and I've been working for nine years of my life to reach the goal of actually working in the music industry. Apply to your dream schools. Just do it. There's no harm. You'll maybe lose 70 bucks, but that's it. 70 bucks for a chance to go to the school that you've always wanted to go to. <laughs> if nothing goes to plan, you can always go to community college. I hate that there is stigma with going to community colleges. They are affordable, they make sense, and you can transfer into an amazing school afterwards. I don't understand why people don't like community colleges. If you don't get into the school of your dreams, do not worry. Go to community college, work really hard, and reapply. And I believe in you, and everyone believes in you. You can do this. Those are all of my high school tips. I really hope that they help and help you survive high school like I did. I survived high school and it was a lot of fun actually. College advice I cannot give you because I am going to college now and I have no idea what I'm doing. So if you are a college student or if you are a college student at UCLA, the school that I'm going to, please, please help me. Please, please give me your most valuable tips in the comments. I would really appreciate that. That would help me a lot. For everyone who is in high school or is about to go to high school, please don't worry. It's not at all like people say it is. High school is what you make it. Go to your pep rallies, go to your football games, go to your basketball games, hang out with your friends, do the stupid high school cliches. You won't regret any of it. With that, I'm going to go. I've been sitting on this chair for 40 minutes and my knee pits are sweaty. If you know any more very valuable high school lessons, please feel free to put them in the comments below. I'm sure that other people scrolling through the comments would really appreciate those. Obviously, I'm not an all-knowing being, so um, if I'm wrong about anything or if you have anything to add, please help me be a better influence to the world. Let's all get through high school and college together. I'll see you guys in a few days with a brand new video. God bless and goodbye. Sorry.